we're going grocery shopping and yes. not the normal form of grocery shopping. We're gonna go spear our fish today. Last minute decision. We are off. It's gonna be a great day, guys. Yeah. What do you think we should do? Well, we got four boats here. There's seven of us, so I think uh, I think we should just tie the boats together and, and just drift a little bit. We don't. Um, there's not a lot of current out today, so we can cover some ground and give everyone an opportunity to try and find some fish. We kind of have like a Spiro gang today. We have four different boats, so I think before we get going, it's a good idea to introduce the gang. So first, we have Greg. He's behind me. You'll remember Greg from a few days ago, actually, when our water maker was broken. He was kind enough to let us borrow his jerry cans. And then behind me, we have Shay and Chris. Say hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> so Shay is actually visiting her father, who is a full-time cruiser. He's been a full-time cruiser for six months now. So, so six cool. Months of the year. Six, six months of the year. Six, six months, months of the, of the year, year. Yeah. I stand corrected. And then our other crew, they have just driven off on their dinghy to go do some- uh, Recon. Recon for us. We have Joe and Yost. So it's gonna be a crazy fun day. With all these people, we have to bring in a good haul. Like if we don't, something's wrong. There's either no fish here, or we're not very good at our job. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Shay, have you ever speared before? Never. <laughs> What? I, this is my first time. My first spear has not have. killed a thing. Hopefully, it will today. <laughs> nice. Not bad. First shot right off the bat. Nice. Good work. So that was a successful recon mission, I'd say. Oh yeah. <laughs> One of the things about spearfishing here in the Exumas is much of the Exuma chain is actually a national, a Bahamas National Park, and therefore you're not allowed to spear. Uh, actually, just um, to the north of us is the Land and Sea Park, and then also just to the south of us is a not, no harvest zone as well so being here in georgetown we are just on the atlantic side and we're gonna see what we can find don't have much room to work in but plenty enough for us today up until moving on board adventure cruise i have really had no spear fishing experience um, other than the charters we've done with our friend freediver stuff the last couple of years and even then the only thing i've ever speared was a lobster and that was on our honeymoon so i'm still so new at this and not a hundred percent comfortable um, i know it's just going to take practice and time in the water to get more comfortable, <laughs> I kind of like to laugh. I've uh, I've speared a lot of those rockfish, you know, those fish that like to hang out under rocks, but I miss and I shoot the rock instead. I've gotten really good at that. So uh, today specifically, <laughs> I'm gonna work on my aim and I hope to bring home a fish or two, three, who knows? Getting our spears all put together. They come in uh, three different parts actually. You have the injector rod, you have the main body, and then you have the back, uh, which has the um, rubber band on it. Um, but when we were getting ready to leave the States, we were kind of researching, you know, different spear poles and so forth. And knowing that we were gonna be really focusing on an ocean to life table, or I'm sorry, ocean to table lifestyle, I knew that we wanted the best of the best, and that's why we ended up going with black reef spear poles. These things are just full carbon fiber and um, just really hefty and fast. They're super fast. We're 
gonna get back in the boat and relocate, try to find some more structure, more reef, something, uh, some, some place where uh, some fish may be because they are not here today. We are all getting out of the water and going to another spot. There's a pretty decent sized reef shark that started darting around. He darted past me. And then one of uh, one of the guys here, Greg, was actually going after it, uh, trying to scare him off. So when, yeah, when yeah. sharks come around so, and they start to get darty, um, yeah, that's so when you like wanna when get out of the water. And they're just like cruising. You know, there's, they're like an yeah, yeah, they're way out, right? Okay. And they're, they have, they're just, they're just like. He was the doing fish. that at first, earlier, the first and time then, I saw him. Whenever they start to get aggressive, yeah. their pectoral fins will come in close to their body, yeah, they and, and they, them, and they start to, they start to dart around and, and turn and, yeah. and you can just totally tell at it. At that point, they're either hunting or attacking or. Yeah. Like you can totally. Yeah, like Greg said, at that point they're either hunting or attacking and asserting their dominance. So when I first saw it earlier, I don't know if I was able to capture it because it was far away. He was just floating around and then he started darting around, so that's why we're getting out of the water. Always best to be smart because you gotta remember we are we're in their ter territory when we get in the water and they're the apex predators of the sea. So just always best to be smart. Almost everyone, except for a couple people, have left now, and we're gonna check one more spot, and then we're gonna go in for the day two because we have a big hogfish to fillet today. So don't forget about our, this lobster. <laughs> I know you don't love lobster, but I'm excited about my lobster too, so. I know you are. Ah, it's starting to rain a little too. Woo, 80 degrees, it sounds like it's warm, but I just got so cold in the water, my feet and hands were going numb, so I had to get out. But this is your first fish. This is my first fish. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. First fish is a big Bahamas hoggy. That's right. Bring it home to bacon tonight, baby. Good job. Good Woo! job, babe. All right, let's go home. <laughs> we got work to do. Aha. Look at that. Would you what? just look at it? Would you just look at it? Just look at it, babe. My fish is bigger than yours. <laughs> My fish is bigger than your fish. What an awesome.
awesome day of spearfishing that was. Now we just tied up our dinghy with the Waves RX boat lines and what a great product it is. We bought them six months ago and they have held up tremendously. I invite you guys to check out them on their website, wavesrx.com or on Amazon. And if you use this special code on the screen there, AdventureWRX, you'll get an additional 20% off. All right, so just like any other fish, we're gonna come down here as we fillet it. And on these hogfish, you can go pretty far up into the head here because there's some awesome meat there. Now at this point, I like to turn the fish around. And now we just follow this backbone all the way down on the top. And I've got the blade at like a 45 degree angle, just trying to cut down onto the bone, um, just to kind of get as, keep as close to the bone as possible. A lot of people call these fish hog snappers, but actually I was corrected by our good friend, good friend Laurent. These are not snappers. They're actually part of the RAS family. So like a grunt, if you will, um, same type of family. But these hog snappers are called hogs because of their snout-like mouths. These mouths allow them to eat crustaceans and pick them up out of the sand, whether it be shrimp or clams or mussels, whatever the case may be, but they use these teeth and, and these, these uh, snouts to dig them up out of, the, out of the sand, crabs as well. And these are just awesome fish to not only catch, but uh, to, to spear. And what's actually interesting about these fish is for the longest time, people were not catching them on hook and line. Um, they were only something that you would find in restaurants from, I guess, commercial divers and spear fishermen. So now you're starting to see them in restaurants uh, because people have in, you know, I would say the last decade have really started to target these fish on hook and line, especially where we're from in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, uh, west coast of Florida. So they certainly do not get this big uh, where we're from um, that I've seen. Now, some people go out uh, and I will be corrected if I, if I didn't say this. Some people go out to what's called the middle ground and shoot massive hogfish there. Uh, these fish can get up to 50 pounds, uh, but this is a, just a awesome, awesome size hogfish. Uh, and actually my personal best that uh, here in the Bahamas. Hogfish is such a nice white and firm fish. It's uh, great to cook in any fashion, really. We are excited to be able to start making some water. As you can see behind me, I have the water maker all taken apart from yesterday and ready for the new part. So. The thing with these is that the is out. Emily is in a whole nother mood this morning. Talk chatty Kathy first thing in the morning. This is Ryan. Hello. And can you tell also, us what? Also, this is our knight in shining armor. <laughs> Can you tell us what happened with this? So inside the pump heads, there's a vein pump and it has carbon veins in it basically. And over time they just wear out and go bad. And um, once in a while they can break and then sound really bad and make no water whatsoever. So it is a wear item. It is something on all water makers, their pumps wear out at one point or another. Um, so here we have a brand new pump head ready to go on. So he just switched out the fittings here, and since I was able to uh, to take it off, I asked for his assistant to put it back on to make sure everything is 100% because, well, we're, as we're learning, I am 
really good at telling people how to do things as my career, but not always great at doing them myself when it comes to being handy. So Ryan, I appreciate your help. Uh, most welcome. <laughs> so now that we have this back together, I'm going to just put it back in place. I'm not gonna put all of the, well, you know what? I probably should put all the screws back in it because once I get these on, the filters on, then I can't open this back up. So scratch that I just, we're gonna put it all back. Look at that. The sun has just set over this gorgeous day and all around us we hear these sounds of the blowing of the conch horn which is tradition to blow them at sunset around here in Georgetown at least and typically conch, um, conch shells are blown as a celebratory means of celebration so we actually did that on our wedding which was really fun but we're getting ready to eat our fresh hogfish for dinner. I need to go help Cole. We have had an epic day. We hope you've enjoyed the spearfishing journey with us. And with that, I'm going to say good night and we'll see you tomorrow.